Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I want to explain a little bit about this Christmas tree video that everybody's been asking about. It was our unconventional Christmas tree from 2016 using a paper bag. Um, we made actually a life-size version of this paper bag here and turned it into a tree. Um, you may have heard about the popular paper bag craft that usually goes around, um, circulates or in the fall. Um, well, I did that craft around October that year and thought, hey, I'll do this for our Christmas tree because we have a tradition where we make a Christmas tree that's kind of different every year. So we made this tree kind of just for fun. I didn't really take a whole lot of notes or um, I just kind of did it as it came. I didn't take a whole lot of progress pictures. That's why the blog post is very, very vague when I talk about it because I didn't think anybody would really care. And here we are in 2019, three years later, and everybody's asking me how did I do it, asking different things about it. And I think they're thinking to use it for Halloween or kind of a, a fall tree, a spooky tree. And you're right, it did kind of look spooky. That's why we painted it. Um, in the end, I painted it white for Christmas because it was kind of scary looking, um, which is perfect for this time of year. So I understand why you want to learn how to make it. Um, so in this video, I'm going to try to describe a little bit about how we did that. Now, I'm not going to make life, life size again. I'm not going to make a life size version tonight. Um, that honestly, it took an entire week and we were just trying to figure it out. Hopefully with these instructions, you can figure out how we did it and kind of make it your own. So, okay, here we go. I'm going to show you and again in the miniature version and try to explain how to make it life size. Um, so here we go. First of all, I used craft paper. Now I'm just going to use an actual paper bag. I cut it up to kind of explain how I did it. But for the paper bag, um, using the roll of craft paper, um, I got the 75 square foot roll and uh, it was about two feet wide. So imagine each of these slices of paper is two feet wide. I also, it even says in the video, so I remember this actually, is um, I made it 15 feet tall. So it was 15 foot tall. To make one front side of a bag, I used two, two pieces of the roll. I rolled them out, laid them side by side here, okay? And that would be 15 feet for both of them and two feet each on either side. That means it was four feet across the front. And what I did is I took packing tape, okay, for the life-size version. I'm just going to use regular tape for this. And what I did is I just carefully took the packing tape and I put it on to make the front side. Just like that. That is one full side of the bag we made. Put a little bit on there. I think I kind of spliced it up. So that is one side there. Now I'm going to do it again. Here's the second side here. Just going to put it side by side. Again, 15 feet long, and they're already two feet wide. So there's another side right there. I have the front and the back of the bag right there. Now for the sides, it's super easy. You just roll out two 15 feet um, slices. You don't need to tape them together because those are just the sides. So I have those there. For the bottom, what I did is it has to be four feet wide by two feet long. So I took the craft paper and I rolled two separate sheets that were two feet long. So when I put them together, they were four feet wide by two feet long. Just like that. 
And then, okay, now this was difficult because again of the massive size. If you see some of the pictures, our whole living room was covered in craft paper. Literally, I almost didn't have enough room to do it. So I took the sides, all right, I kind of laid them side by side like this, and I taped them, I think I taped them front and back. Okay, and then I took the front and the back and I taped them to their matching sides as well. Just like that. And see, here's the other side. I'm going to tape that right there. So you almost, you kind of have a cross between the two. Now my husband had to help me with this, but what I did then is you fold up the sides See, now you have the corner right there. You fold the side up, and you gotta tape that together. You're making one corner of the bag. Now this was a little trickier. What I'm gonna do, I think what we did is we matched the top up. Okay, match the two tops up like that. Make one long side. I'm going to do another side here. Look, I have the whole front of the bag. It just kind of needs the, the flap. There is an entire paper bag that I constructed. It's the same way it was before, but imagine that 15 feet long, okay, by four feet wide. Now what I'm going to do next, all right, is to hold it down. Now we were thinking it was gonna be pretty heavy. All right, we built a base, and a lot of you have been asking about the base to fit underneath inside here. Now if we were to have built it just the bag itself, the sheer weight of how much paper was there, it would have just like kind of fall, it would have fallen over. So what I did for that is I used two by fours. Okay, my husband did actually. He is again an engineer so he's very good at kind of putting together things safely. I'm the idea girl. I have all the great ideas and as an artist I can kind of figure out how to decorate it but um, logistically he is the one that helps figure out um, how it works. So two by fours. It has to fit in the base all right to keep the square base like in the craft. So four foot long two by fours and two foot long two by fours right here create a base kind of like a frame. Now we used nails. He actually used nails and screws to screw in to hold them together. I'm just gonna hot glue it. All right, so two four foot two by fours, and for the sides, two smaller two by fours, all right, that equal a total of two feet, just like that. All right, now I, I didn't demonstrate this, but he also got really fancy and had connecting braces in between each corner. So each corner he braced with a 2x4. I, I didn't have the enough of the 2x4s to show you that, but he also braced it. For the trunk, I mentioned I had a uh, PVC pipe. I'm going to use a straw, all right, for this demonstration. But the obvious 
obvious issue is we needed something to hold it straight up and down. So another thing we did for the base is we kind of braced it. We had smaller 2x4s in the middle. All right, we had a chunk right there. Again, I don't remember the exact measurements. We built it kind of with the PVC pipe in the middle to see where it would go. So we had two smaller ones going from the middle and two larger ones. I remember it got pretty tall. We had larger 2x4s going like this, all right, so that there was a little space in the middle and the PVC pipe could just fit right in without falling over, just like that. See, it keeps it straight. So here, I'm gonna glue that on really quick and show you how that works. There's one, and there's another. Again, I do not remember the exact measurements. That's something you'd have to figure out for yourself. But just to give you a visual, because I cut this part out of the video, there we go. So I have the matching measurements of the bottom of the bag made out of two by fours. And I have two cross and two smaller ones going meeting in the middle. And there's a tiny little space in there to hold the PVC pipe up. The PVC pipe goes straight through the hole. Again, I would build it like we did so it fits right in there. And that holds it straight up and down, just like this. This is the skeleton of the life-size tree we made. Just imagine it life-size. All right. So what I believe we did next, okay, is, and I almost wish, okay, in hindsight, that we had built the bag around the base because I just remember it being so heavy and having a hard time getting it in. So what I would do if you do this on your own is actually build the base of the bag underneath the two by fours is remember before the bag was taped together how it was in that cross. I would build this base over top okay, of the bottom before you tape it together. Have, have the base built and then tape the sides together so it's already in the bag before you do everything else. All right, is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stick the base into the bottom of the bag, okay? So it fits, it's actually a perfect fit. If you can see it, it's right there. That's what the bottom looked like, okay? And then what we did is we took the PVC pipe, okay, again, and stuck it right inside see if I can see it. Stuck it right in like I showed you and see it fits straight up and down. So the next thing, once you get the kind of the skeleton in there, is cutting the branches. Now what I did then, okay, is with everything in there I kind of folded it. See how they fold in like a regular paper bag collapses? I folded them in, all right, and I decided how big my branches were going to be. I decided I wanted them to go down to the base of the PVC pipe, okay, which it actually starts right there. That's where the PVC pipe would have ended. Now, you can make it as long as you want, but the height of the tree, or height of the trunk, is up to you. That's how tall the PVC pipe is. Mine's right there. So I'm going to cut, actually, a bunch of strips. Okay, those are going to be the branches. all the branches right here. So what you could see me doing in the video was kind of opening it all up so I could get to the base of the straw, which again was my PVC pipe right there. I have it all open, ready for the wire. Now there's a part of the video where you can see us sticking in bits of wire. So for me to show you this, I'm actually gonna change the camera angle. Hang on one second. 
All right, now we can see a little bit better. So again, you wanna use a thick wire and it's up to you how long you want your branches. But so here's one piece of wire. We used really, really thick wire, like 10 gauge or less. Um, the smaller the number on the a metal wire, the thicker it is. Um, on that note though, you wanna be able to be strong enough to cut it and bend it. So that's up to you how thick. Now, I have a thinner piece of wire for this tree, but what I did is I cut enough branches that I thought I'd need and I slid the wire down through the PVC pipe. Okay. And I'm gonna cut a couple different ones. I, I did all different lengths, but I did them just about as long as the branches. Now you might have to trim them. I just, I remember playing around with them. Um, it's not always easy to get a good balance and bend them. Okay. So I'm not even really measuring, I'm just cutting a bunch of different ones and sliding them through. So I have four different wires in there right now. You see that sticking out? Now the size of the PVC pipe is gonna determine how many pieces, uh, how many branches you're gonna be able to put in. Um, I think I used about two inch PVC pipe, um, just to give you an idea, um, but that's up to you. Now, all right, so here I'm gonna start with these four. First thing you wanna do, all right, is you're gonna twist the base. That is one of the trickiest parts. You can see that he helped me do it. Um, for this, I'm just gonna collapse it. Okay, I'm gonna bunch it up, all right, up to that PVC pipe, which is the straw in this sample right here. Okay, so I'm gonna bunch it up like that, and I'm going to twist. I'm gonna twist it up and up and up. See there, it's getting thinner. Getting thinner. All right, till it's all the way at the top. Hmm. You can feel that base in there. All right, so once you get up to the top, you're just gonna grab two of the pieces and start wrapping them around each other. Around and around. I think I just started grabbing them and wrapping them. Just like that. There's one branch right there. And then I took a little bit of tape. And went off to the edge. That, that's something else you can't see for the branches when I put them together, is I taped a lot of the seams and kind of squished it too. until it went out to an end, just like that. And then you can trim it or not. It's kind of cool to see the point on the tape. It's not perfect. All right, and then I'm going to keep twisting. I have four branches right now on this tree. Now, 
a couple things. One, do you see how the trunk is kind of untwisting? What we did, all right, is I used twine. You can kind of see this in the video too. We really, we tightened the, the trunk as much as we could. All right, and I actually used some actual twine here. He helped me hold it down and in sections, we tied together knots to help hold it in place. I think we did it in about one foot sections. And then we trimmed it. So there's one that's really tight right there. And then I'm gonna twist it a little bit more, holding it together. That's why in the video, you can kind of see sectioned off pieces going up the trunk to keep it held together. That's what we did is we tied it off just to hold it in place because the sheer weight was too much. Just like that. See, there's two. This one's so short, I'll do one more. Right at the very top. So there's only three sections on there that I tied, but it won't come undone any more then. There we go. Just like that. So there's the trunk. Now the branches, they still look kind of funny. There's only four of them. And that's one thing I ran into is um, I decided I didn't have enough branches on mine and you couldn't see it, but I added some. So I, I intentionally left one out of here. I wanna show you how to add a branch. All I did, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have a hole here. Now, whether you have room in your PVC pipe or not, that's okay. You probably will for this one. And the straw version here, I don't have enough, but I'm still going to show you how to add one. Because I'm going to take another piece of wire, okay, and let's say I want another branch. You're just going to have a hole up here in the middle. All you have to do is stick another piece of wire through the inside. You're still gonna have a little bit of tunnel, all right, going on with your trunk, all right? But see, now I have an extra wire here. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take some slices. Now here's this bag I showed you in the beginning. I took some smaller slices of the paper, all right? So let's say I'll have two here. Okay, I have two here. What I did, if you wanna add a branch, is kinda of stuff them down into the middle. All right, and then wrap those around the branch themselves. So kinda of anchor it in, you can tape it if you want. All right, but how you add a branch is you just stuff it down in the middle there and wrap it around, taping it as needed. I'm gonna tape it off here. Um, another thing too to think about is the tips here. You wanna make sure you're taping the tips to a point. You can kind of tell in the video that they're pointed, um, kind of like branches come to a thin end. That's another reason for using the tape because the paper isn't going to stay perfectly in place. It'll kind of untwist over time, so the tape kind of helps suction it. Um, around for the middle, too, you could probably tape it if you don't have twine, but I thought it kind of gave it a nice texture effect going on there. All right, so I have five branches on my miniature tree now. It's starting to look like the one in the video. If you have extra wire, by the way, you can trim the ends off or you could leave them for extra length and add more paper to them. I'm just gonna trim them for this one. So see, I have my branches here, all right? What you can do with the wire is you can bend them 
okay? Because when you take them out of the roll, it's going to be pretty straight. You can bend them however you want, all right, to come out to look like a branch. I kind of bent mine up and down and all around to make them go different directions, all right, kind of like that. All right, you can bend them however you want. However, if you hang anything off of them, you can't see this in the video, but um, when I started hanging the ornaments on, the strength of the wire wasn't enough and they started to droop really, really far. That wasn't good. That's another reason I suggest using thicker wire if you do use it as a Christmas tree. If you're just using it as a Halloween tree or a fall tree, as long as your decorations aren't that thick, it wouldn't be that bad. Okay, and here is the miniature version of the life-size tree that we made. And I'm gonna tell you something, I still think it's pretty ugly. That's why I painted it white in the original video. But um, perfect for fall, I can see it, or for a play set. So let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or send me a message, I'll try to answer them. Um, and yeah, love to see pictures of what you come up with. Have fun, happy creating.